Hello, so today in this episode we are going to discuss the pressures displayed on the ventilator when the patient is on ventilated breaths, the compliance system and the practical application of that knowledge on the patient for improved management. In order to gain the concept of compliance, you have to go back to the respiratory system and episodes 5A and 5B. Let's begin. Let's suppose if we were to calculate the static and dynamic compliance of a ventilated case. Right? So in a ventilated case, let's draw a patient with ETT and connect it to a ventilator. Now we know that the diaphragm is key muscle of spontaneous breathing, but in a ventilated case through neuromuscular blockers, the diaphragm is paralyzed, right? As a result of which diaphragm will not move downwards. So the intrapural pressure will not change. Now, in order to generate flow, we will have to increase the pressure from above and this is where positive pressure ventilation of ventilator comes into play. The ventilator would increase the pressures greater than the alveolar pressure of zero and due to this pressure gradient, flow would be established. So when flow is generated through the breathing circuit, ETT and airways, it would try to overcome the resistance. This is called the peak pressure until the inspiration rests. This is where no flow would be present and where there is no flow, there is no pressure gradient, right? This is the basis of calculating the alveolar pressure. So at this point where there is no flow, the alveolar pressure would be the same as the one being registered on the ventilator, right? And that is called the plateau pressure. Now, how would we see these pressure curves on a ventilator screen? Initially, there is end expiratory pressure, right? So, in order to initiate breath, the ventilator would give a positive pressure from above as a result of which flow would be generated from P1 to P2. Now, initially, this flow would try to overcome the resistance of the airways as well. So, greater pressure gradient would be required to generate flow. This is called the peak pressure, which is green in color. Once flow is established, the lungs would inflate until there is no flow or end inspiratory phase, right? This is where the pressure at alveolus and the pressure in the alveoli would equalize. So this would create a plateau in the graph. This is called the plateau pressure. Now, why it is lower than the peak pressure? Because peak pressure was used to overcome resistance, right? But in no flow state, there is no pressure gradient, there is no resistance. So the pressure drops. This is registered as the plateau pressure, which is the true alveolar pressure. So to sum it up, peak pressure would be all about pressures through the airways, overcoming the resistance, whereas the plateau pressure would signify the alveolar pressures, the true alveolar pressures at the end of inspiration, when there is no flow. So how would we calculate the static compliance of a ventilated case? Through inflation hold, right? This is a command given to the ventilator once the peak pressure is reached and end inspiratory phase starts through inflation hold there is no flow and the pressure registered on the ventilator is the plateau pressure so the tidal volume delivered divided by the plateau pressure is the static compliance so let's just be practical about it if i were to say that i were to see peak pressure and plateau pressure on a ventilator and suddenly peak pressure increases but the plateau pressure remains same what would that indicate? That would indicate that something is wrong with the airways, right? It starts from the breathing circuit all the way down. So I would be suspecting kinking of airways, bronchospasm, anything that increases the resistance would require greater peak pressures, right? To overcome the resistance of the airways and generate flow. What about a case where peak and plateau both increase? Now, this is a situation where I would be suspecting decreased compliance in the lungs as well. We have seen that the static compliance is tidal volume divided by plateau pressures. So when plateau pressures are increased, the compliance reduces. 
so i would be suspecting any anomaly in or around the lungs such as abdominal compartment pressing on to the diaphragm right or i could suspect pneumonia or ards where lungs are involved and the compliant system is starting to reduce or if there is air in the intrapleural space like in pneumothorax so plateau pressure and its value basically tells us about the static lung compliance of ventilated patients let's take ards again for an example in ards we know that the compliance system is reduced right so plateau pressures would increase now as per ards net protocol we need to keep the plateau pressures below 30 why because above 30 we've already discussed that it would cause rupture or barrow trauma of healthy lung as well now how would i reduce the plateau pressures and improve the compliance i would give peep right so through peep compliance would improve and we would keep the lungs above the lower inflection points and into the green zone or more compliant part this way compliance is increased so by keeping plateau pressures less than 30 we would prevent barrow trauma and by giving peep through the ventilator we would be recruiting the diseased alveoli in the next breath this is called recruitment of the diseased alveoli so this is where peep helps in improvement of the compliance now the whole equation of static compliance is tidal volume divided by plateau pressure minus peep right so higher the peep lower would be the value of denominator and higher would be the compliance right so this is how peep helps in improving the compliance of the lungs let's just see and the mechanical ventilation of a patient in or receiving volume control ventilation now on the screen you can see the flow graph in blue we are not concerned with that here we are concerned with the airway pressures here so the peak pressure is 21 the plateau is 20 so not much difference meaning there is less resistance in the airways the peep is 3 and that is why you can see that the graph on expiration never reaches zero or baseline level why because the end expiratory pressures are 3 right the significance of peak and expiratory pressures or keeping the end expiratory pressures above the inflation levels let's just calculate the static compliance now we've already discussed static compliance is tidal volume divided by plateau pressure minus peep so it's around 504 ml divided by 20 minus peep of 3 which is around approximately 30 ml per centimeter of water so the compliance here is very low around 30 this is because the patient is a gynee patient ops patient of c section and due to gravid uterus abdominal pressures are high and it's taking greater pressures to distend the lungs and move the diaphragm down against the resistance this is all for today i think we have been able to understand the basic concept of compliance and how to apply that concept through various diseases in a spontaneously breathing or a ventilated case stay tuned for the next episode